Hello, welcome to Smash Hit Sports. I'm Cody, that's Nick. Once again, the number one team in the country has fallen. We're going to recap week eight, give our winners, losers, and dogs of the week. We're going to power rank conferences this uh, this season. So interested to see how that goes. And we're going to preview college football week nine. Before we get started, make sure to like this video. It's a huge help to the podcast. And hit that subscribe button if you are listening on YouTube or the audio version so you don't miss anything. But Nick... What an awesome weekend of college football. Start to finish, we had some absolute electricity Friday night, really Saturday morning, because that game finished at like 1.30 a.m. But let's start with the biggest game of the weekend, Georgia, Texas. We were wrong. We were wrong. Yeah, we were. Um, and it seems like everyone in the world, like college game day, I'm pretty sure they all picked Texas. Um, everywhere I kind of looked was like all over Texas. That was very concerning. That's the problem. Again, I, and I think we talked about this. It was like we're recording this on Monday. Um, so, like, right now, deep down, I lean Texas. Um, but, man, if I saw that the public was like that, uh, I would have changed it immediately. So we were wrong, but it's kind of, we're kind of in an unfair spot given how early we have to talk about the games. Yeah, that that is fair. Um, really, though – this game was weird because I thought Georgia's offense played like shit, truthfully. And yet they still ended up scoring 30 points and winning that game pretty handedly. No quarterback in this game looked good. In a game where we thought we were going to get some kind of prestige, some of the better quarterback play, I mean, at least what we've seen so far this year between Carson Beck and Quinn Ewers, we got really bad at quarterback play between both of them and Arch looked awful when <laughs> the, the limited snaps he got. But... Nah. Yeah, that that Georgia defense that this is the Georgia defense that we expected to see at the beginning of the year. This is the Georgia defense that we saw in the second half against Clemson. This is the Georgia defense that won them two national titles. That's mm -hmm. what I saw. They were outstanding. There is something weird about Georgia. Like you, you think about it since 2020 or whatever it is. Uh, the only team that can beat them is Alabama. So there's something. Mm -hmm. um, about that matchup that Kirby Smart and, and the dogs, they're just nervous. They're pissing down their legs. It's a completely different team. But when they're playing anybody else, um, especially someone that they don't play often, like a Texas, right, who has not been in the SEC, like a Clemson, blah, 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 yeah. it is uh, just utter domination. Like, they will stomp on you. They stomped on TCU. They, you know, it, it's so crazy to watch. Um, and I can't, I still can't tell if that's just like a massive difference in preparation. Uh, it, it feels like it can't be like that big of a talent gap, right? Like it feels like there's something mentally about going up against a team that like a Texas that you don't ever play where Georgia just has such an advantage in the mental department and the preparation department and so many things that they look just untouchable when in reality they are probably more vulnerable than than they are than they look i will say this i think it helped georgia a lot that they were a hundred percent more battle tested than texas they played a clemson team that i think is a top 10 team in in college football right now they played an alabama team who say what you will i understand that they lost to tennessee and vanderbilt but they played a good alabama team that's better than any team that Texas has played, right? They played Michigan, who turns out stinks. Oklahoma like, stinks. That, this is what I was talking yeah. to Josh about. I was like, are you worried that this will expose Texas as, you know, because they haven't done anything. And I think it actually probably did. Um, but go, go, on, go on. Yeah, and I, I think that was Texas just, this was their first big test, and they got punched in the mouth. It's why I value trying to – and they did their best, right? They scheduled the previous national champion in week two. They, Michigan just wasn't any good. But it's why I like to have some strong games on your schedule in order to get some of your lumps out of the way before we get deep into conference play. Because now Texas has a conference loss. Georgia has a conference loss. The SEC is absolute pandemonium. Right now, Texas A&M and LSU are sitting at the top of the conference – Truly, we're at, we're at a point where like these. I don't know if any of these teams are the best team in the country. I truly don't. 
Like, could Texas still win the national title? Yeah, I think so. But could Georgia? Yes. Could Oregon? Yes. Could Ohio State, who just lost, you know, last week? Yes. So, I don't, I don't know how to feel. I think maybe Georgia being around F1 and all the fast cars, like, that is their superpower. The more uh, fast fast cars you can get around Georgia players, they just hit harder. They run faster. It's well, like they, do, they love driving fast cars. That's all they yeah, do. Yeah, it's the opposite of their kryptonite. I mean, it, yeah. it, they got a speed boost, essentially. That's how they get their powers. Um, yeah, it really does come down to the fact that, like, you know, Georgia, so as long as they make the playoffs and don't play against Alabama, I think they are just going to be the favorites to win. It, it, they've done enough to prove, like, they crushed Oregon a couple of years ago. Like, every time they play one of these super teams outside of the SEC, it feels like you're watching, like, an FCS team versus an FBS team. So, yes, I think Texas could do it. They just can't play Georgia, I feel like. You know, or it just that's just how it is. Um, yeah. Now we should probably touch on that PI call overturned. Yeah. I'm curious as to what your thoughts are because I am personal. I'm personally happy they they made the change because I hate egregious calls being so unchanged. It was very easily the correct call. Like them changing the call to it not being a PI was the right call. And Why the fuck it. did it take them five minutes to get there? And for half the student section to yeet water bottles onto the field. It yeah. should have never have gotten to that point. No, You should have watched that play in 10 seconds and been like, oh, yeah, no penalty. I Flags think up. Like the, that, the problem is probably that they, wh- whoever announced the penalty probably just made a mistake, you know, didn't discuss it. It was accepted. And then all of the other refs and the, replay assist came in and was like hey just fyi like you're not going to make it out alive um if you don't change that call and they're probably huddled up saying like we can't change the call what do we do but it wasn't because like like i i don't think it was like oh it's they're throwing water bottles we better change the call i think it was pretty immediate they were just too yeah. to announce it in, in general so i don't think the precedent of the water bottles is that big of an issue especially if you've seen some of these guys are getting identified um, by like yeah. UT admin or whatever. I don't so know how real that is. I, I still have some that. hesitation on how real they are. that like getting a text and saying like, we saw you through a water bottle, but yeah. And I mean, I hope that doesn't become a problem, but I don't think it's not going to like result in a change. We're not going to see that again. If, if people start yeah. throwing water bottles, it's not, you're not going to get the call because of that. Um, so in general, I think, yeah, I'm pretty happy they changed that call. It had nothing to do with the end of the game. It turns out, but, uh, just so crazy to watch that live, you know? Yeah, that I fucking love college football so much. That's all that only happens in college football. Imagine like there's a, a called strike in the world series and like the dot, like Dodgers fans just like yeet water bottles onto the field. That would never happen. So I, I love college football. It's so crazy and stupid. But games like this are why it, it, I understand people, the the people who said, well, the 12-team playoff, like these games don't mean as much. No, it still means a whole hell of a lot because now George is in the driver's seat of the SEC, kind of. They still have Texas A&M and LSU, but they play each other this weekend. Like there, anything could happen. And I love that about this year. Um, but let's go Friday night. You texted me at the end of that BYU Oklahoma State game. That was insane. Dude. I I thought for sure <laughs> you you had picked Oklahoma State going uh-huh. into that game, and three quarters of the way through it, Ollie Gordon looked like himself again. Like I thought we were getting a Mike Gundy masterclass, and BYU man, the, I was... the BYU the quarterback. He was a stud. I, at, at least on that final drive, like he might be my dog of the week. We'll have to see. But um, it, that's just one of those games. Like every now and then, you know, it's Monday. We make our picks, and I picked Oklahoma State. My logic was just like, oh, this kind of feels like a, you know, a, everyone thinks Oklahoma State is absolutely garbage this year. Guess what? They're not. It's not how it works. Everyone thinks BYU is unbeatable. Guess what? They're not. I don't care that they're playing at home. That just felt like a trap. So I picked it. And then the week goes on and I'm thinking about it and I'm like, you know what? I actually love this. I love Oklahoma state. 
And it became like a, I am so confident in Oklahoma State here and no one else in the world is. And I put, you know, my hard earned money on a solo bet. I never do that. I only take parlays because I'm not like very pro gambling, but Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I put my hard earned money on Oklahoma State and I'm texting everyone, all the BYU fans. I'm commenting on everything. I'm basically just setting myself up to do the biggest victory lap of all time if Oklahoma State wins. And in my head, I'm like, they could still lose this by 30. Like, this is a massive risk. And they were up with 40 seconds left with a 99.3% chance of winning, according to ESPN. And I was, that's when I texted you. I'm like, this is fucking insane. Um, And then BYU, 80 yards in 40 seconds, touchdown. And I, it was very sad. It was very sad. But I still, I mean, to get that close, pat myself on the back. Because that was one of those where I, I put my, my balls on the table. And it was yeah. close. I, I mean, right right theory, wrong result, right? You were on the, the Unlucky- bad side of an immaculate drive at the end of that game. Like, it is what it is. That game was awesome. BYU, I, I am now, they survived. Iowa State survives oh, oh, that's another one the I, top I, of the big 12 uh, dude i loved ucf and and for, for almost the same exact reason and then almost the same exact thing happened where iowa state should have lost it's like the yeah same with 28 seconds score. left they go down and score and Rocco crazy terrible all day and of course he figures it out at the end and they're at home just like byu it, that iowa state mega fraud has been the whole time BYU, I'm a believer. I'll leave it at that. I still feel very good about my pick of Kansas State winning that conference. Yeah. I, I will. I still feel very good about that. But the the Big Twelve, we're going to rank our conferences. I don't know how to feel about the Big Twelve. Um, let's talk Rocky Top, Alabama, the third Saturday of October. I have two things I want to say about this game. Number one, Josh Heupel's such a good fucking coach. He is such a good coach. When things come down to the wire, he plays really well. I saw a stat. Um, I think Justin Hobbs had it on, on TikTok or Instagram. But Josh Heupel it has a 500 record against Alabama and Florida. And there hasn't had been a coach that's had a 500 record against Alabama in Florida this century. Like, that's... He is setting the really? standard at Tennessee. In any school? Yes. Whoa. Sorry, at, at Tennessee. Oh, okay. Which is like, I understand that like 500 is not great. But at the same time, Josh Heupel's doing what no other coach has done in the last 25 years at Tennessee. He's truly outstanding. The other thing, holy fuck, Tennessee fans, learn how to smoke a cigar. Act like you've been there before. I see these dudes, they got to have a cigar three quarters of the way down their throat oh my. in the back there. It's unbelievable. Unbelievable. It's, it's absolutely absurd. What are we doing? Um, yeah. I mean, I saw that there was that child that they put on the broadcast um, who looks like he was like 15. It's just like, I'm pretty sure whoever was announcing the game, I don't remember, but they were like, Oh, that age restrictions don't apply to this cigar rule. It seems but that's all right. Um, you know, uh, what I will say is it, it's kind of, wild to me that you know th- th- we had the third saturday in october alabama tennessee huge game georgia texas um like this weekend of college football was great but it almost mm-hmm. feels like it was completely overshadowed and like far less exciting than the past couple of weekends i think you know that would be a fact i think that last weekend was we it feels like we've almost been spoiled a little bit i'm not mm-hmm. used to seeing Tennessee Bama in this spot and being like, eh, I don't really care. Like I didn't care as much as I yeah. feel like I could have, you know, I don't know if you can relate to that, but yeah, it, it was, it was weird, but I think it says more about Alabama being down than it does about the, like the landscape of college football, because if this was typical Alabama, they probably are going into this game undefeated. Right. But Alabama had lost to Vanderbilt. So for them to lose to Tennessee, it doesn't feel nearly as impactful. And also, we saw this same result two years ago, right? The last time they played in Nayland Stadium, 
Tennessee won and they rushed the field. And so seeing it just two again, two years later, uh, yeah, it, it just doesn't hit the same. But I feel like we've been very much spoiled with, one, the last couple of weeks, and two, the last couple of years with how this game, this matchup in particular has gone. So Tennessee-Bama, obviously a huge game, but Miami had maybe the most insane game of the day. They, that This is the fourth time that that offense has put up 50-plus points. Cam Ward, if it wasn't for a potentially historic season from Ashton Genty, I think would be the runaway favorite for the Heisman. That dude is absolutely insane. I don't know if this Miami team is good or not, Nick. I really don't. I know that they're undefeated, and I know that they might have the best offense in college football. I'm not convinced that this is a good football team. That defense is suspect. Yeah, it, it's one of those things where like, I, I am thinking to myself, what if Cam Ward um, you know, got hurt right before the playoff was announced or something? Like, if they were kind of put in the same position as Florida State yeah. last year, would they like wh- how would the committee view them without Cam Ward? Is this just Cam Ward being so crucial to their success and just being a Heisman, you know, uh runaway candidate? But um, you know, I, I think it probably is. But, you know, you kind of just have to hope that that doesn't happen. And if that doesn't happen, I think Miami's gonna be fine. I think they're gonna be fine. I don't think the defense really matters. I think it'll only be a problem if that offense starts to sputter a little bit and with Cam Ward, I doubt that happens. Yeah. And looking at the rest of Miami's schedule, I don't see a like potential for them to really, really like slip up again. They don't play SMU or Clemson. Clemson doesn't play SMU or Miami. The the three best teams in the ACC. If you want to include Pitt, it's different, but the three best in my opinion are not playing each other. And yeah, I, that's great. I think they have a, a potential to sleepwalk into a game uh, at Syracuse at the end of the year, but like that's a that's a maybe. Florida State has the chance to do the funniest fucking thing though. <laughs> if they beat if they beat Miami, that would be the fun. They won't. They're they a twenty five point underdog, which is absolutely insane. But when is that? Is would that be this fucking week? funny. Yeah, that's that, this weekend. Oh man. Well, so yeah, I mean. Florida State just lost to Duke. MJ Morris yeah. had 70 total passing yards. Um, Florida, Florida yeah. State has one win. Like, remember week they two? They had turnovers three? on three consecutive offensive plays. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking like week two or three. We were like, Florida State could go two and 10. And it was like, oh, no, no, surely not. Surely not. But it's just gotten so much worse. Like, that Georgia Tech loss yeah. is actually like, Kind of a good loss for them when you look back at yeah. it. It's like oh, you guys were really close in Ireland to beating yeah. like a pretty solid Georgia Tech team. Like, yeah, man, that, and that that's fine. But yeah. yeah, now they're just losing to everyone and anyone by however much they want. They don't have a pulse. It's it's absolutely insane. They are they are dead. Um, speaking of dead teams, Indiana killed Nebraska. They killed yeah. them. They fucking killed them. And I. I don't know how to feel. I almost wish that this game was closer for, for Indiana. So I could be like, yeah, Indiana played a hard fought game uh, against, you know, a really good Nebraska team, but no, they just beat the shit out of them. And now like, I can't sit here and say, well, Indiana has played some good teams because now I don't know if they have. Nebraska looks really bad. Fair. Yes. But I, 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 I think we can believe in Indiana at the height of its level right now. I think that was enough. You got to think this Nebraska team, you know, played really well in their other loss against Illinois and Mm -hmm. then um, destroyed Colorado, who turns out they're actually really good as well. You know, this is a fluky. The Colorado's, they look very legit. They should have beat Kansas State. Um, and, And so Nebraska's clearly not a bad team. They did not play well. And that game no. got away from them. And I think that Indiana ran up the score and whatnot. But yeah. I am willing to say Indiana, they are officially, you know, playoff contenders. They're not frauds at all. And I think we can yeah. say that. And I'm interested to see what happens this weekend. So Curtis Rourke went out with an injury. 
I think that he's for sure out against Washington. I think he's potentially out the next like two to three weeks. So can Indiana continue to be this good without Curtis Rourke? And I don't know what the answer to that is. Um, Their backup who I would, I want to look and see so I don't get his uh, name incorrect. Um, Taven Jackson. Okay. Uh, n- do I, you no. know? Do you know who he's related to? Lamar. No. Uh, Trace Jackson Davis. Oh, really? It's his brother. Well, no wonder he's in Indiana. Yeah. Yeah. So anyway. <laughs> He went for 225 and three touchdowns against well, that's Nebraska. What is, whoever the backup is, clearly not a problem, right? Yeah, so I, I feel pretty confident they're going into Washington as a six-and-a-half-point favorite. Fun fact, next week's schedule is loaded. We don't have that game in our 12 games to pick, and that's insane. We, I mean, we can add it, I guess, but truly. Well, we, we, yeah, the only one is we have a 25-point spread in there. Um, with Oregon, Illinois, but it's hard not yeah. to include a ranked matchup. So, yeah. So let's do this. We'll include Indiana, Washington. Or we're both going to pick Indiana, though. So probably, yeah. Yeah. So I don't think we even need to. Truthfully, not worried about it. But man, it, shout out to Kurt Signetti and what he's done. In like, it's one thing to change a program by getting a bunch of NIL recruits and getting a bunch of transfers and doing this new era of college football, which is, it's totally fine. But what he did is he got the right recruits and he got the right transfers. And he has guys who they don't turn the football over and they don't make mistakes. They don't commit dumb penalties. They don't shoot themselves in the foot. They don't have negative plays. Their scheme is sound. It's not anything absolutely outstandingly difficult, but they execute it incredibly well. Indiana's just a – they're a well-run program right now, and yeah, that's no, insane it to say. I think it's a coaching thing more than anything. And honestly, it begs the question, how long is Signetti going to stay at Indiana? Because he's clearly proven that he's, he is a, as much of a winner as anyone to ever exist. Um, so – it almost feels like anyone in their right mind should probably drop who they have and hire him. I the I want more than anything in my life to have a I win Google me edit into this is Indiana the the song that they made about college basketball except it's all college football highlights. I want inject that into my veins right before they make a Big Ten championship. Oh you th- God, would you think uh, would be outstanding? It, it, Let's say Ohio State drops another weird one, loses first round of the playoff, you know, inexcusable. They fire Ryan Day. Do you think Kurt Signetti takes that job going into next year? You think that would happen? I, I don't know. That would be insane. They would Tr- offer him truthfully a, a gajillion dollars. So yeah, they, and they would. They would too. So like, how is he um, supposed to do it down? Yeah. We'll Holy see. shit! All right, let's talk two more Big Ten teams. Um, Michigan's fucking ass. Yeah. And USC also garbage. I think USC has they they're less garbage by a, a large margin, even though they lost Michigan. <laughs> I, yeah, uh, USC's USC's lost on like Fair. the last play four weeks in a row, and Michigan has looks like a literal dumpster fire high school team. So Lincoln Riley at the end of games is just incompetent. I, yeah. I don't know how else to say. Like he shits down his leg every single time. But like Michigan, they just Outside don't. Of, um, I, I was listening. Yeah, right. they just they don't have an offense. Their offense doesn't exist. It's like if you made a college football team and you had a zero rating on offense and a ninety nine rating on defense. It's like what would happen? Full season sim. We're watching <laughs> it with Michigan because that yeah, defense so is true. still really no. good. They held Luke Altmaier to under a hundred yards and lost yeah. by two scores. It's really weird because it's like. It, it's they're giving Iowa vibes of of the you know yes. last year even where it's like it's so unbelievably bad on offense um, and so great defensively. But then Iowa, I would I would take last year's Iowa team over this year's Michigan. So they're somehow worse, yeah, offensively or worse defensively. 
and it that just doesn't make sense. Like how? How can you? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. I don't know. Also, Iowa losing to Michigan State. That was a weird last game. Yeah, that was weird. Um, and now Michigan State is going into Michigan, right? Yep. This is that week. So, yep. I mean, I, I, is that on our game picks list? Probably not. It's not. It's not. But that's what, I, that's what I'd love that, to pick. Well, but again, I'd probably do, go Michigan State. <laughs> yeah. Um, let me, while I'm going through the college football schedule to maybe add or delete a game from here, um, I do want to briefly talk Washington State. Because we're getting to the point now where, like, they're just outside the top 25. They were the next most receiving votes outside of the AP poll at 26. They are 6-1. and one. They are first in the, in the Pac-12. But they play five games the rest of the year. They play at Oregon State, who they will be favored against. But they play essentially the bottom of the mountain West. They play San Diego state, Utah state, New Mexico, Oregon state, and Wyoming who none of those teams have looked anywhere near impressive at all. There's a very good chance that Washington state goes 11 and one. Yeah. A very good chance that Washington state goes 11 and one. And I don't, I don't have anything else to say on that except for that could be a very, very weird, a very, very oh. weird conversation. Well, yeah, I, I don't think they deserve it. And I think if the college football playoff rankings came out and they did like a one through 40, even at mm -hmm. six and one, I don't think Washington state would be where they are in the AP poll. I think the AP poll is pretty dumb, honestly. Mm -hmm. um, I test wise, Washington state probably deserves to be around like 38. And if they win out, maybe they're at like 20 or 24 or something by, by the time mm -hmm. then I don't think Washington state fans and whatnot, unless, um, you know, unless like Liberty somehow gets in above them at like, I, I there's not really any scenarios that worry me about Washington state being like upset at the end of the year. That's awesome. That's fair, but something to keep an eye on because yeah. I like John Mateer. Their quarterback is outstanding. Um, really, really fun to watch. But that's it for this week's recap. Let's do uh, winners, losers, and dogs of the week. Before we do home field apparel, they have the new pullover jackets that look absolutely sick. Um, use code NICK15 for 15% off your first purchase at home field. They truly have the best merch in the game. We are in secret scrimmage season of college basketball. So if you need to get your basketball merch, um, go to home field, NICK15. They, they did a whole bunch of HBCU stuff. They, they have every single school. It's absolutely outstanding. So home field apparel, use code NICK15 for 15% off your first purchase purchase nick winners losers and dogs of the week i'm going to start with you who is your winner of the week i'm going to give my winner of the week to billy napier and that's because i was reading that uh i think it was saturday down south neil blackman um he said apparently florida was crafting a plan on how to replace napier and when the best time to do it was and it was like, all right, is it going to be midseason, end of season? It'll probably be right around midseason. We'll probably let him go. Um, and the Kentucky game was kind of circled in that sense. And now, after putting up 48 on a really good Kentucky defense, holding them to 20, looking like a real legit football team, and Florida is sneakily 4-3. and three. You know, they could make a bowl game. But we, that was never out of like the question. What? I would like to point out they're one game away from winning their win total. I know. Yeah. Their no, win that, like four and a half. Like, like that, we, we were saying like, Oh, they'll be bad. Like maybe they make a bowl, but it's weird seeing it now, especially mm -hmm. off of a big time crushing against a decent Kentucky team. Um, Billy Napier. And this isn't a win for Florida fans necessarily, but for mm -hmm. Billy Napier himself, he might have a future in Gainesville. He might, you know, if he goes six and six against that schedule or even better somehow, I think he sticks around for a little while longer. And that's after week one when he had players completely quit on him 
um and we're posting on on instagram stories just like i hate my fucking team i hate my life this is the worst <laughs> yeah. you know because of billionaire and he fought the mascot like what a turnaround so he's my winner i i love that my my winner of the week i am going to stay in, in the northern part of, of college football i'm gonna say that kansas state is the winner of the week because in a Big 12 that looks weaker and weaker, and we're starting to see cracks from BYU, and we're starting to see cracks from some of these other teams, uh, uh, Iowa State, Kansas State looks the best that they have looked all season. They roll West Virginia, and they've been playing really good football. They beat Colorado, who is a – this Colorado team's good. Like, they are – legitimately they're going to make a bowl game like they are potentially going to compete in the big 12 kansas state looks good and i think they are going to solidify themselves as the best team in the big 12 and i think it started this week so my winner of the week is kansas state yeah i mean i i do think that west virginia is is playing pitiful football right now yep um but they are still probably pretty happy uh, to be where they're at, it, it almost seems like there's always a Big Twelve team every week that mm-hmm. we could just be like, they that's good for them because again, it's the most chaotic conference. It just is every year. It's crazy. That's fair. Um, loser of the week for me, the Calgarhythm. Um, Ooh, there are, good, good. There are a, lot of options, a lot of options for loser of the week, and USC is pretty similar to Cal in this sense, but Cal is three and four, four straight losses. One by one point to NC State because they missed like a 30 yard field goal to win. 28. Yeah. 28, 28 yard, yard field goal. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, they lost by two to Pittsburgh. I think for pretty much the same reason, right? They missed yep. a field goal to win that game. They lost by one to Miami. They had college game day. They were up 25 in that game or whatever it was. Again, I did not look into this. And then they, they lost by five to a one win FSU team. Um, their Florida State's only one win. And they missed two field goals in that game. Yep. And they were driving at the end of the game down five. Easily could have scored a touchdown and won. They, I mean, we're talking about a, a Cal team that could be undefeated or six and one easily. Like they sh- absolutely should have beat Miami. And if they yeah. win that game, do we think they lose? They, maybe they lose to Pitt, but do we think they lose to NC State? You know yeah. what I mean? Like, maybe, like we could be talking about maybe even five and two. Cal and and they're getting some AP poll votes because they beat Miami and we're talking now about them being irrelevant probably forever because that's just what Cal is they're back to just you know whatever they're three and four it's Cal so they're loser of the week my loser of the week is all of the haters and losers who said that the college football playoff expansion was going to make the regular season matter less you are haters and losers for a reason there are (laughs) games this weekend that would not matter an ounce if it were not for the fact that they expanded the college football playoff. Friday night, we have Boise State at UNLV in the Mountain West, a massive, massive game for the college football playoff. Notre Dame Navy, huge playoff implications. Wild, wild to utter that sentence. Like Missouri, Alabama, this is an elimination game. Like whoever loses this, you're done. You're toast. See yeah. ya. Like that game wouldn't matter at all. Like it, it's unbelievable. LSU, Texas A&M. LSU yeah. and Texas A&M are undefeated in SEC play. This game matters so much. And in a 12 team playoff, eight and 14, maybe it doesn't matter as, as much as it should. It huge game, huge game for the playoff. Like SMU Duke. Like there are so many games that matter in the coming weeks because we expanded the playoff because otherwise there are very few teams that are undefeated that like really can, like if you we were to say hey it's now a 14 playoff i would think the race is down to like maybe eight teams i think there are eight teams that truly matter i think notre dame they lost in week two they would be out of it not a problem like there are there are so few teams that would we would have to talk about and now they all matter, and all of these games matter, and I yeah. fucking love it. To piggyback off that, because, I mean, this is, again, I've, I've been preaching that so long. 
And I'm that's, you know, loser of the week every week is anyone that hates on the 12 team playoff for me. And that goes back to four years ago. But another point that I bet they would make, you know, I haven't even heard this, but I bet they would be like, okay, you know, Alabama, Georgia, that's a game that should matter, but doesn't, right? Because it's number two versus number three or whatever. And, (laughs) you know, like whoever loses that, they're still going to make the playoff. Like going into that game, that I guarantee was any of the, that was the hater argument was like, this does not matter. And it sucks that it doesn't because they're both going to make it. Well, guess what? Alabama as of right now, probably is not in because they lost that game. Actually, sorry, Mm -hmm. they won that game. But like point, point being that like, oh my God, imagine if they did, you know, lose that game. Imagine they did blow that lead. They were probably completely eliminated right now. Like it absolutely mattered. Um, And it it just, there's no games that don't matter. In my opinion, every Oregon, Ohio state will probably end up at the end of the season. We're going to be like, yeah, that actually was massive. The result of that. So I agree. All right, Nick, who is your dog of the week? Yeah, uh, speaking of Georgia, I'll give it to Jalen Walker and Michael Williams. Um, I feel like a little bit of the complaint about Georgia was that their defensive unit as a whole wasn't as like aggressive. It wasn't as scary as we were used to. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think maybe they heard that. I, I mean, Kirby Smart is the master of motivation in that sense. But those two guys looked like they could be, you know, Trayvon Walker, first pick of the draft. Like, they were just fucking fantastic. Like, so scary. You saw some all-22 angles of Quinn Ewers taking the snap. And it was like, oh, my God. Like, I would be shaking in my boots looking at these guys coming off. And this is a Texas offensive line that has been so good all year against a Georgia defensive line that hasn't been as good. And Texas's offensive line got manhandled. So, dogs of the week to those guys on the edge. Yeah, I I, I love that. Um, the those were they were in my like I had them written down as my backup. If you picked the guy that I was going to pick, and my dog of the week, he has been absolutely insane. Is Bryson Daly? Bryson mm. Daly at Army has been un believable he has seven passing touchdowns and 19 rushing touchdowns on the season but in a game against east carolina which might have been their closest game of the season so far and by might have it was their closest game of the season so far they only beat them by 17 um he carried the ball 31 times for 171 yards and five touchdowns this man said hey don't worry, boys. I got you. Salute the service, brother. He kicked so much ass. And I I truly think when we get to the point at the end of the year, or like maybe right around the Notre Dame game, they're 9-0 and headed into Notre, Notre Dame. He is going to be brought up in the Heisman conversation Ooh. because he has been that outstanding. Whoa. Uh, yeah, that'd be crazy, dude. Imagine, <laughs> imagine we have – an army QB and a um, Boise State running Boise back. Boise State running back. <laughs> Those are the one, two Heisman finalists. It's like, wait a second. And then Cam Ward, who's like a zero star recruit. That'd be just nuts if that was top three. Yeah. Make a movie out of that. Um, all right. Let's rank some conferences. Yep. Let's rank conferences. I, I think we just need to come to an agreement here and we'll go bottom up. So, <laughs> We're, we're going to power rank every conference in college football. We'll have a little discussion, but we will have a final graphic that I will post. I think um, we'll agree off, off rip, if I'm being honest. Okay. So let's start out then. Conference USA has to be at the bottom, and I don't think there's I have them discussion. at nine. Yeah, I have them at yeah. nine. Okay. Conference USA at nine. Liberty is undefeated. Um, Western Kentucky's five and two. Sam Houston State is five and two. They've played some really good football, but – at the end of the day, I think very weak schedules. The middle of this conference is very, very, very bad. Liberty like outside like of, a, like they're barely undefeated too. Like Liberty is like yeah. scraping and crawling to wins against a not great schedule. Yeah, they and they, they have basically aren't D one, and they have some of the worst teams in college football too. UTEP, Kennesaw State, New Mexico State, like Kennesaw State, yeah, terrible, bad. FIU, Lost a little bit of them. <laughs> So, um, okay. Well, at eight, 
I have the Sun Belt. I would assume that you do as well, but there's a chance you have the Mac here. Yeah, I also have the Sun Belt. Um, while I think the top of the Sun Belt still has a chance to be pretty good, and there have been some prize teams, uh, Louisiana and Louisiana Monroe have have both been surprisingly good. I think Texas State was kind of the favorite, and JMU um, at, at the start of the season to win that conference. But yeah, we were wrong it, about JMU. Yeah, and, and Josh actually got us on that one. He picked Georgia Southern. He did, and. Don't get me wrong, Georgia Southern, five and two. Like, there's a lot of good in this conference. There's just no great. Um, also, the bottom of it, again, very bad. Southern Miss just fired their head coach. Uh, Troy in, in – um, oh, I can't remember his name. But their first-year head coach, they're one and six. Georgia State has a win against Vanderbilt. They're two and four. Uh, there's just – the bottom of the App State being 0-3 in conference play, crazy. So, yeah, I, I have the Sun Belt at eight as well. Yeah, I mean it's it's tricky um, because like you like JMU beats North Carolina, Louisiana beats Wake Forest. Like these are the big wins. Mm -hmm. But you look at the MAC, who I have at seven, and you see Northern Illinois beating Notre Dame at Notre Dame. You know Bowling Green being up against both Penn State and A and M in like the fourth quarter. Mm -hmm. um, it just feels like the Mac is a step ahead on their ability to play up to their, their competition in that sense. Yeah, I have the Mac uh, as one of the better group of five conferences just because they do have, like, say what you will about Mississippi State, but that's an SEC team that Toledo put 40 on and, and whooped. One by 27. Yeah, and, and with NIU beating Notre Dame, like, I, I just think the Mac, like, that it's – which NIU beating Notre Dame in their four and three. God damn it. I hate yeah, that so not much. Great. Not great. Um, but the Mac has been, I mean, there's been a lot of good football in the Mac this season. And I think there will continue to be, like you said, Bowling Green ha has been balling. So I'll put the Mac um, at, at seven there with you. This is where um, I'm interested to see what you got at six. I have the Mountain West at six. I I am going to put them out. I was interested to see if you had the Mountain West or the American Conference here. And this is, I, they're two really close uh, toss ups. I think three and four is really close. I think five and six is really close. But I, yeah. I mean, I think it's got to be Mountain West at six for me. Yeah. I just think the bottom of the Mountain West is so, so bad. Um, San Diego State, three and three. Wyoming, one and six. Utah State, one and six. Air Force, one and six. It's a lot of bad teams. Yeah. And if um, you, you put up those conferences against each other, like Boise State versus Memphis, I think would be a really fun game. Mm -hmm. You know, Navy, UNLV. Like, but I, I think the favorite would probably be in the American Conference on 90% of all the matchups if you match them up one versus one, two versus two, you know? Yep. So I, I'll agree with you. So we have the Mountain West at six and number five. I almost want to put the Big Twelve here. <laughs> no, okay. I, I'm gonna be, dude. I'm gonna be honest. When you look at the Big Twelve, there, I get that there's BYU, Iowa State, like Kansas State. You can't Army against Texas Tech. Like that'd be. Yeah, but what about Army versus Kansas State, BYU, and Iowa God. State? That's fine. You know what That's I mean? Like you can't you can't put the American above the Big Twelve. I don't think it's even really close. But, um, I, so you're outing yourself as Big Twelve at four. I yeah. think I think it's close between three and four for sure. See, I disagree. The Big Twelve. the The problem is, is what do you? Because for me, the Big Twelve has just had so many disappointing teams, right? Like. People were high on West Virginia. They're three and four. People were high on Arizona. They're three and four. Utah's ACC four has, and three. ACC like is Florida State. I know everyone's that's one team in a vacuum. <laughs> that's one team in a vacuum. You look at like so. This is where I, I I'm glad that we had this conversation. So we'll put the American at five. We'll put the Big Twelve at four. That's where I have them. I have the Big Twelve at four. Okay. I, I, I don't think the ACC has been that disappointing, to be honest with you. No, they haven't like, been disappointing. Outside of Florida State, like Syracuse is five and one. They're good. Duke is six and one. It's Pittsburgh more, six and zero. Oh. Like, it's an eye test thing. It's it's if I if you put Pittsburgh against Colorado, I think that I take Colorado. I don't think Pittsburgh the way they look, outside of Eli Holstein being just an absolute dog, especially at the end of the game. 
But oh my god, like I watched Pitt versus UNC, and it's just this. It's just like horrif- horrifying to watch. Even if you're watching a lot of points being scored, it's just like oh my god, this is pathetic. But then Baylor versus Colorado is like this is exhilarating. You know what I mean? It's just a little different in that sense. Um, like Syracuse Pitt is a huge game in the ACC. Um, I don't think it's going to be that fun to watch that game. You know, I disagree. Kyle McCord and Eli Holstein. I'm going to be awesome. No, 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 no. I, I stand by this point so aggressively and I'm, I'm an ACC truther. I, I, I want them to be great. I am a vast believer, especially in college basketball, but Syracuse versus Pittsburgh. I promise you from a just overall energy and vibe watching that game, you're going to, it's not going to feel how it should feel. For, you know, th- 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 we're talking Pittsburgh undefeated. <laughs> like we're talking about, we're talking about like this is that it, they are. It is far below, um, what it should be now. Clemson, Miami, that would be a different story, and 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 Louisville. I don't think Miami, you're giving you. I, I don't I, think you're I, giving your conference enough credit, man. I I think the yeah, ACC I, is I, so fun. I, fun, sure. Like wh- like I could watch a game and be like this is. This is awesome, like the chaos and whatnot. Um, but the it's it's an energy thing. I don't really know how to explain it other than that. But and the Big Twelve has this problem too. West Virginia, Kansas State was was horrible from an energy standpoint. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think you have more games in the Big Twelve that would be like, okay, this, you know, I'm I'm a little more glued to my screen, um, and it just feels a little different. I, I don't I, you'll have to watch that game this Thursday pit Syracuse to and yep. I'll, I'll I hope that it is what I'm talking about but I stand by that so aggressively that I, I refuse to have my mind changed because I've seen it my whole life it's just how it is that that's that's fair SEC Big Ten the one and two spot I think this is the opposite of what I would say 99 percent of the time I think the Big Ten is better at the top and the SEC has better depth. But normally, I think I'd switch that. Like, normally, I think the SEC has more depth. Or, no, normally, I think the SEC is better at the top and the Big Ten has good depth. But, like, I kind of want to put that. I want to put the Big Ten at one. I'm going to be honest. I do. Indiana undefeated, Oregon undefeated, Penn State undefeated. You have Ohio State. You have Illinois at 6-1. and one. Like, What do you think the... What do you think the Georgia Indiana score would be? You know what I mean? I mean, fuck, fine. But like, what? <laughs> but like, even I like but that's not the matchup. I guess it would be. Sure, but I, like, I, I, I think you take. What would the Texas A and M Indiana score be? Because that's what we really have to ask you. The top of the conference. I guess that is technically fair, but <laughs> there are a lot of SEC teams. Um, that like, what what would it be? Um. Indiana versus Texas A and M. Like, if we went, can, is there a way we can do that one versus one and just see? Uh, okay, yeah, yeah. Indiana would be. At, I'm just going off of what I have listed on now. Obviously, it's by conference games, but is what it is. So it'd be Indiana, Texas A and M. Yeah, I. I mean, that is that is a toss up. I'll give. I'll okay. say that that's a, a toss up. LSU, Oregon. I would take Oregon in that game. Okay. Penn State, Georgia. I would take Georgia. Okay. <laughs> Illinois, Tennessee. We'll take Tennessee in that one. Yeah. Um, Wisconsin, Missouri. Honestly, yeah, I would probably take Wisconsin. <laughs> That's an that I agree. I, interesting game. Missouri, uh, Texas, yeah. Texas, Ohio State. Oh, complete toss up. Yep. Complete. Um, Nebraska Vanderbilt. Okay, this is where I think things start to fall off. I, that's what I'm saying. This is closer than you thought. This is where I think things start to fall off. Uh, Alabama, Michigan State. <laughs> See, that's the thing is we haven't even said Alabama yet. So Alabama, yeah. Michigan State, give me Alabama. Yeah, and then Arkansas, and then Ole Miss, Iowa. Ole Miss yet? No, Ole Miss, dude, they're one and two in the conference. So you got to get through Arkansas, who Florida, they, and South Carolina. Play? Who would they play one to one? Ole Miss would be. Hold on, one. Two. Like Minnesota. They're 12th and yeah, Minnesota. They, no, they well, would play Minnesota. Yeah. So I, it's, 
tough, but I think, yeah, conference standing wise, you know, you're going to have some really good SEC teams towards the bottom right now. And, and if you did that for every one of them, I think you're looking at the SEC just being better, but you're right to consider it. I think for sure. Yeah. I, I don't think we could change that right now. That's fair, but I do think it's an interesting conversation. All right. Let's go through this week's picks. Week 9 preview. If you guys are going to a game, I went to Cincinnati, Arizona State uh, this past weekend. Awesome environment. Homecoming for Cincinnati. All the tradition and the tailgating. It was incredible. And I got $20 off my first purchase using code SMASHHITSPORTS. You guys can as well. Go to a game. Use code SMASHHITSPORTS for $20 off your first purchase. And we talked about this Thursday night game. It's going to be absolutely electric. Syracuse at 19 ranked Pitt. Uh, Pitt's a six point favorite. The total is 61 and a half. There's going to be a ton of points. Nick, who do you like in this game? Um, I'm going to go Syracuse. I've been a believer in Syracuse. I think if this was on a Saturday, I would probably lean Pitt, but I think there's just a weird, like how rowdy is that student session going to be? Thursday night, you know, if you have like 9 a.m. on Friday, like it's it's kind of tough to have a, a game that big on a Thursday in October. So I kind of like Syracuse here, maybe. I, I, I think I'm going with them. All right. I'm going to go the opposite. I'm going to take Pitt, but I, I think this game really could be a, a ton of fun. McCord, Holstein um, should be a lot of points. Friday night, we have – a matchup that I was so looking forward to, and then UNLV ended up losing a game. It's tough. But nobody we, – we stopped talking about them a little bit after their pandemonium. Now we have Boise State off of a bye coming at UNLV. UNLV is a two-and-a-half point dog. I am so torn on this game. Truly. I, I, love, I love UNLV here, I think. I, I think I love them. I, and I think they're – you know, it, it's got Ash and Genty hype and whatnot has gotten to a level where if a team is capable enough, like the way UNLV is, they're they're going to be like on the hunt to to end this media obsession. There, like, it's one of those things where it's like that's extra motivation for your your kids just being like, like he's running all over everyone. Everyone's talking. He's the best running back in the world. Like we're going to stop this guy. I think it's possible. Ash and Genty doesn't get to 100 yards. Wow. That's that, I don't that think is a... I'm not predicting it. But I think it's like I think we I can see a world where it's like Genty, you know, 17 carries, 90 yards and a touchdown. People are like, "Oh, that pretty pedestrian game for Genty." It's cuz UNLV did everything in their power to stop it. Which is possible. That is possible. In in all of football, you can always stop a running back if you really want. Yeah. And I don't hate that. Uh, 10.30 kickoff, going to be an awesome game. I'm also taking UNLV. I like Haj Malik Williams a lot. Barry Odom, a hell of a coach. Um, I think this the go-go offense, I think, is going to give. People forget how bad this Boise State defense is. They are bad. And I, I think UNLV can exploit it a little bit. Also, Ricky White, um, their wide, wide receiver for yeah. UNLV. Three blocked punts, which is more than any other FBS team. That's crazy. He's a special yeah. thing as well. Well, he's a dog. Yeah. Well, that he's going to get drafted this year. I can guarantee yep. you that. Yep, absolutely. Um, so I'm taking UNLV as well. Notre Dame at Navy. First off, it's a crime that this game is played at MetLife. Um, I hate that. Like, neutral site games suck. I understand why they do it for – you know, to compensate as many fans as possible, but this is gross and I hate it. Um, Notre Dame's an 11 and a half point favorite. Navy is undefeated. Give me, I love Navy. Uh, give, give me Notre Dame. Give I me love, Notre Dame. I love the spread here for Navy, though. I love it. Yeah, I, love. Don't, I don't hate that, but I mean, Notre, I'm Dame's taking Notre Dame as well. Them. Notre Dame has proven it time and time again. Like I said last week, we said it. Um, you know, we all picked Notre Dame. You were worried a little bit that maybe this is a trap game for them. They just keep pounding uh, the rock and looking elite defensively. So much talent on that team. Marcus Freeman, he, I think he's just a guy that loses a bad game a year. I think he's a great yep. coach that just loses a bad game a year. And he's already gotten that out of the way. So no way he loses. But if you're going to give me like 12 points or whatever it is, 
against Navy, who's hot as hell, and this isn't in Notre Dame. This m- might be more Navy fans at this game. Yeah, mm-hmm. I love that spread. Yep. I, I don't hate that at all. Um, Washington at Indiana. This is college game day in Bloomington. I believe it may be for the first time. This is an incredibly did we get, exciting. We took away Illinois versus. Uh... I did. I did not. Um, I added. I got rid of uh, Cincinnati, Colorado. Gotcha. 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 Um, but yeah, Washington at Indiana. I. It's going to be game day. They're going to be excited. I understand that there's no court. Curtis Rourke, I think Trace uh, Jackson or Taven Jackson is going to be absolutely outstanding. I keep getting his brother's name mixed up with him, but so, so good. Give me Indiana. I think they win. I think they cover. I think Indiana rolls here. Yeah, I I think I think it might be closer. I think I um, wouldn't be surprised if this is kind of a letdown spot, I guess. like mm-hmm. it, it kind of feels like officially now the Indiana train is, is, has gone public. Like you talk to anybody outside of, you know, Midwest, big 10, all that. Everybody knows that Indiana is a juggernaut, but are they really looks like it? I think they probably are. I'm going to go with Indiana, but just beware. This is a beware game. And a lot of the times so far this year, the beware games have been proven true. So just watch out. I don't know if you're looking at the spread for this next game or if you've seen it. I so did. I, why it's is huge. BYU only a one point favorite against UCF? Oh, okay, I thought we were going to Oregon. Um, yeah, I. Oh, sorry, my bad, my bad. That. Yeah, let's do that one first. Okay. Um, yeah, the which another what? Illinois Four fans five in the ranked game. They're bitching at me in my comments because I don't have Illinois. I, I have Illinois at 23, and I think that they're incredibly overrated and that they really, truly probably don't belong in the top 25. And they're hollering at me. They're a 25-point underdog in a conference game. This is ridiculous. The ranked top 25 matchup at a 25-point line. What on earth are we doing with that? Like that is That should never be. A ranked matchup should always be competitive at least. 25 yeah. points that is insane what what was the line against purdue not much more than that 28 it was not much more yeah like they, purdue is horrid and illinois is ranked and there's the same line ah, yeah. i don't know crazy but uh so we're obviously both going oregon i will yes. say i have on my notes right here because you're referencing the byu game I, I have for Notre Dame, I have, I love the Navy spread. And then for BYU, I have what a crazy line. God damn it. <laughs> yeah, dude, this, I, there's no reason that UCF should be oh, what this close. Oh, a crazy line. Which is kind of why it, I it, like it, UCF. Oh, you have to like UCF here. This is, they're begging you to take BYU. They, they don't want you to take UCF. You have to take UCF, but I can't. Because I just picked against BYU, and everyone was like, oh, you're such an idiot. Like, Oklahoma State is awful. BYU's going to crush them. And BYU ends up winning that game, and I'm like, I'm sorry. I was wrong. I'll never doubt BYU again. They have powers. They have superpowers from God. I can't immediately go and pick against them. So I have to go BYU here, but you should absolutely go UCF. I'll fucking do it. I'm taking UCF. <laughs> give, me, give me the Knights at oh, home. Wow. Yeah, love it. Love it. Crazy. Um, Missouri at Alabama. Alabama's a 13 and a half point favorite. I think Missouri might kind of stink. Yeah, I, I absolutely agree. It wasn't high on them coming into the year. I'll tell you that much. And then Alabama coming off a loss. But here's the thing. Alabama has played like shit in three consecutive games. They mm-hmm. played like shit against Tennessee. They played like shit against South Carolina and almost lost that game. And they didn't. And then they played like shit against uh, Vanderbilt when they did lose. Yeah, but the thing is, that's enough for people to now think that Alabama is just bad, or at least like it's official. They're not what they used to be. Blah blah blah. Like that, the public mind is probably convinced that they're just going to continue to play bad, mm-hmm. uh, and I don't think that's the case. And I, I, especially with how I feel about Missouri, I love Alabama here, and we'll see. Maybe this is a bounce back where they can. It's kind of a get right for the rest of the season game. Um, we'll, we'll have to see, but I like Bama. Yep. I'm going to take Alabama as well. Um, which would set up an interesting Alabama LSU matchup. Um, another top 25 matchup, Texas at Vanderbilt. That yeah. felt weird. 
Um, <laughs> Vanderbilt's an 18-point dog here. I mean, Texas I'm, by a, a gajillion points. Yeah. By, I'm taking Texas. But like, I, would take them, I would take Texas minus 30. I'd say that. Wow. Okay. Oh, yeah. Nick's very confident. I am not as confident. Um, I will not be betting on that game, though. I can tell you yeah, that much. Doesn't, doesn't that feel like a – like, ooh, Vanderbilt, you know, they're playing – again against this this team that like they're gonna they're gonna ruin another team like they did bama and and texas looked bad against georgia Mm -mm, no i could also see though a a world where vanderbilt fourth quarter coming down late diego pavia runs one in he's pumping his chest he's all pumped in front of the home crowd and they lose by 17 and cover i can see that you know what i'm saying i can also see it being 35 nothing at half because mm-hmm. Texas is pissed off, and Vanderbilt is, you know, maybe they're ranked like this. Like people are Vanderbilt. I don't think is good enough to be ranked. I'm gonna I'm gonna say that, and I I just think that this is a stomping waiting to happen. Fair, Michigan, Michigan State. We added it to the card. Game time decision. Seven thirty kickoff in the big house. What we, give what we, me? What, what game did we take away here? Um, I, it turns out I already had Washington, Indiana in the, the picks. So, uh, that, this was what I removed Colorado, okay. Cincinnati for. Gotcha. Okay. So uh, we do have still 12 games. Yeah. Um, uh, Michigan state's winning this game. Michigan mm-hmm. state is winning this game. Mm-hmm. Jonathan what's, Smith what's has the boys cooking. The line is five points. Um, Michigan is the favorite. Michigan I, is the favorite. Yeah. Michigan is the favorite. What's- they are the total is 40 and a half low scoring affair. Give me Michigan state. I like Jonathan Smith. I believe in him. I think this is a huge statement win for this Michigan state program to say, Hey, we're, we're not, we're not all the way back, but don't forget about us. And yeah, um, give me the Spartans I'm, here. Aiden Childs. I love, love Michigan state in this spot. I can't believe that, that Michigan is still getting Vegas love. They are, they've just been so bad, but I mean, that's just an invitation. It's an open invitation. Take Michigan. I'll do it. I've been wrong about them. It feels like four or five times already this year. Uh, It's kind of like, I'll be wrong about this. You know, it's one of those, but that's okay. Uh, We have to differ on a couple here. So. Yep. Uh, Penn state at Wisconsin. This is a interesting line. Six and a half points. Wisconsin has been playing well, like ever since they have. Um, you know, their quarterback went down against Bama, Tyler right? Van Dyke went down, yeah, and and that was week two against Bama, and then they, like, lost themselves for a little bit, but they've and very they're quietly been winning they're games. Back. Yeah, like, this is the best Wisconsin team as far as these last two weeks of probably the 2020s, visually. Um, yeah. So, I, I guess, I don't be surprised. Um, if it wasn't... It, Penn State, though. If they just didn't blow that lead to USC, we're talking a completely different thing here. Then their only loss would be to Alabama, right? This this would be, but they blew that lead. They had a huge first half lead, and uh, then USC came roaring back. You don't want to take Wisconsin. You're, I mean, you're selling it. I'm, I'm going to take Wisconsin. Uh-huh. All right, I'll go. I'm going to take Wisconsin. I'll stick with Penn State, but I like Wisconsin in the in that spot. I really do. It because it, it also feels like a everyone's looking out towards the Penn, two weeks from now, Penn State versus Ohio Penn State. Penn State has Ohio State. Yeah, that look-ahead spot. Yeah. yeah, it's like – Night uh, game in Madison, jump around. Oh, man. <laughs> ah. All right, I'll stick with it. So that's, that's a must-watch game. That's yep. going to be – I'm very, very excited for that one. That one should be a great game. Um, the top of the SEC tips off. Um, LSU at Texas A&M. In College Station, Texas A&M is the favorite in this game. We, this used to be rivalry week, right? Right? Like my whole life, this was this was during rivalry week. Uh, I'm not sure to be honest with you. They might I have switched like, it. They switched it though because Texas and Texas, so Texas and Texas A&M could play rivalry. Yeah, week. I. So I mean, it almost like I, I just, I guess that makes sense. But I was definitely like, because yeah. I swear to God, the seventy to seventy two game, that game lives in my memory week. forever. That was Thanksgiving weekend. Like I was home from yep. college, um, yep. so that 
that used to be the rivalry. I feel pretty confident in that, but I guess it's not anymore. But still, they know each yeah. other well. They play every year. I, I've died on the Brian Kelly can't win big games, and I, I've been wrong about LSU quite a bit. And if I'm going to continue to be wrong, I might as well continue to be wrong in this game. I'm going to go Texas A&M. Okay. I, I think at home they've played well. Like mm-hmm. their only loss being Notre Dame. I, I think people have kind of slept on Texas A&M a little bit. And this one's really hard. This, yeah. This is the hardest one for me, I think. Because um, this is Mike, Mikey Elko coming in to, you know, this is probably the biggest spot that he's been in as a coach. <laughs> um, and, you know, Brian Kelly's been at LSU. Like, like it, it just, <sighs> it's so tough because LSU's also been playing really well. Um, but like Nick Scourton could disrupt the hell out of that. And do Scourton I Scourton and well, Campbell is going to be a matchup to watch. And like LSU so doesn't fun. have like Harold Perkins is out for the season. He tore his ACL. So mm-hmm. as far as like Connor Wegman throwing in the middle of the field should be fine. Like it's just there's so many deep cut analytical things that again on a Monday, like I haven't had time to look into it enough. It's really hard to make a pick. But I'll go Texas A and M. Because that's just what Ooh. my gut's telling me. I love it. I love it. We are on the same one there. Last game on the slate, SMU at Duke, 8 o'clock kickoff. A game that kind of means a little bit for the you ACC. Would, you wouldn't dare go Duke here, would you? No, I'm going SMU. Yeah, okay. I'm I going SMU by, by 10 to 100,000 points. 10 100,000. Duke keeps getting by weirdly a, lucky in these games. Like, weirdly lucky SMU in these looks games. so good. They look so they yeah. have they are clicking on all cylinders right now. There is no world. Oh, it would shock me to my core. It's probably what's gonna happen. It would but shock yeah. me to my core. SMU. I love that. Guess. All right. Hell of a way to end it. If you enjoyed the show, make sure to like, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any episode. We drop these every single Wednesday. We have college football for the next several weeks with college basketball coming up. So don't don't what, forget. Uh, what are, don't what forget. are our records? Um, did we go over that? Did we? What did we do no, last week? We did not. Um, I, I I'm surprised you brought it up, Nick, because you went five and seven last week. Um, yeah, I know it wasn't I, good. Yeah, I went seven and five. Um, we are. I'm sixty three and twenty nine. You are fifty nine and thirty three. And Josh, Josh so, probably beat all of us. He probably went eight and. Josh four. went ten and two. Yeah, ten and two. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he had a hell of a week. <laughs> I mean, we can't bring a guest in and get dominated like that whatever hey. all right um that happens. I'll, I'll, I'll update that five and seven seven and five okay cool but, but yeah you're right college basketball right around the corner gonna start making content about that very soon very excited yeah so make sure you guys hit that subscribe button be a friend tell a friend and we will see you in the next one adios